everyone. Welcome to Statute Stories. Today, we're diving into the world of legal system as we explore the judicial and bar system. I am Christine, and if you're fascinated by the world of law and justice, you're in for a treat. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more fascinating content. Let's get started! Alright folks, let's start with the basics. The Judicial and Bar Council, or JBC for short, is a key player in the Philippine legal system. It serves as the constitutional body responsible for selecting and nominating candidates for judicial position. Yes, you heard it right. These are the folks who help choose our judges and justices. Their main function? To vet and recommend nominees for judicial positions. The Council's goal is to improve the quality of the search, screening, and selection processes as well as to protect these positions from any undue influence, ensuring that only the best and most qualified individuals don those iconic black robes. Now you might be wondering, who makes up this council? Well, the JBC is composed of the Chief Justice, the Secretary of Justice, and the representative from Congress. We've also got legal professions cream of the crop, a representative from the Integrated Bar, a professor of law, a retired member of the Supreme Court, and a representative from the private sector. I and my crew are so lucky to have been given the chance to meet and interview the JBC members. Each interview has the same set of questions so that we may be enlightened by the different answers coming from the esteemed members. Please introduce yourself to us and state your position in the JBC. Good day everyone. I am Chief Justice Alexandria Gesmundo, the ex-official chairperson of the Judicial and Bar Council. Greetings everyone. I am Attorney Gilbert Cahayag, Secretary of Justice, a member of the Judicial Bar Council as an ex-official member. Hello everyone, I am Senator Cecilia Villarosa, a member of the Senate and an ex-official member of the Judicial and Bar Council. Hello to the viewers of this show, I am Maria Julieta Ferrer, an ex-official member from the House of Representatives. Good day everyone, I am Attorney Fernando Robles, a representative of the Integrated Bar. Good morning, I am Amanda Garcia, I am a professor of law at Sanbeda University and a member of the Judicial and Bar Council. Good day everyone, I am former Justice Alfredo Mirafuentes, a regular member of the Judicial and Bar Council. Hi everyone, I am Antonia Ilaw, a representative of the private sector. How did you become a member of the JBC? In my capacity as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, I am the Chairperson of Judicial and Bar Council by virtue of my office. The President may choose individuals based on their legal expertise, integrity, and standing in the legal community, with the consent, of course, of the Commission on Appointments. As you all know, the Congress shall have a representative in the JBC as an ex officio member. I was chosen by the Senate to be the ex officio member of the JBC, a representative of the Senate. I am a member of the House of Representatives. As mentioned by my colleague, Senator Villarosa, the Congress shall have a representative as an ex officio member. Provided that there are two chambers in the Congress, each chamber shall have one representative. Under the current arrangement, I will sit from January to June and the good senator sits from July to December. And only one representative is to sit at any time. Prior from the confirmation of the Commission on Appointments, the President selected me for this position making me a regular member of the Council. I was appointed by the President and has undergone a process confirmed by the Commission on Appointments. I am supposed to enjoy my retirement, but I was called to serve by the President. I was appointed by the President from the previous administration. My appointment was also confirmed by the Commission on Appointments. What are your qualifications and achievements that made you an eligible member of the JBC? I have been serving as a Chief Justice of the Philippines since April 5, 2021. I studied Bachelor of Science in Economics at the Lyceum of the Philippines while I obtained my law degree from the Ateneo de Manila University. I have served as a trial attorney at the Office of the Solicitor General and became a Supreme Court Magistrate. I became Assistant Secretary at the Office of the President in 2001 
Then I became the Chief of Staff until 2003. I served for nine years in the House of Representatives before accepting this role as Secretary of the Department of Justice. To begin with, I practiced law for five years before being elected to the Senate. Championing social justice and equality is at the core of my values. I've made significant strides through the Equality and Inclusion Act, which addresses systemic inequalities, promotes diversity in the workplace, and ensures that everyone, regardless of their background, has an equal opportunity to thrive. I believe these accomplishments are enough to make me an eligible member of the JBC. I am the District Representative from the 4th District of Negros Occidental. I am also one of the principal authors of several bills such as the Act for Instituting Absolute Divorce as an Alternative Mode for the Dissolution of Marriage and the Act Providing for Early Voting by Qualified Senior Citizens and Persons with Disabilities in National and Local Elections. I am also the Chairperson for the Committee on Justice and the Vice Chairperson for the Committee of Suffrage and Electoral Returns. My practice areas are labor law, civil and criminal litigation, appellate practice in the Court of Appeals and the Supreme Court for almost 15 years. With a solid foundation in legal theory, I have accumulated a wealth of practical experience as an attorney. My legal practice spans several years during which I've successfully handled cases across different areas of law, contributing to my comprehensive understanding of the legal landscape. These qualifications and achievements collectively position me as a candidate with the knowledge, experience, and values necessary to contribute meaningfully to the Judicial and Bar Council. I became an Associate Justice in 1997, Senior Associate Justice in 2003, and I am proud to say that I was named one of the 10 outstanding young men of the Philippines in the field of law. I was one of the outstanding alumnus the UP College of Law. As a member of the judiciary, I received honorary doctorates from nine different universities. I obtained both my Bachelor of Arts degree, major in philosophy, and Bachelor of Laws degree at San Beda College. I became a presiding judge of Branch 52 of the Regional Trial Court of Puerto Princesa City. And in 2016, I retired as a presiding judge of Branch 266 of the Regional Trial Court of Taguig City. What is the process in selecting appointees? First is the publication of vacancy. When a position in the judiciary becomes vacant, the JBC publishes the vacancy in newspapers and on its official website. This serves as a public notice and an invitation for qualified individuals to apply or be nominated. Second is the application and nomination. Interested individuals can submit their applications or to be nominated by qualified organizations. The JBC accepts applications for a specified period and sets criteria for eligibility, including educational background, professional experience, and other qualifications. Next is the interviews and public consultations. Shortlisted candidates undergo interviews conducted by the JBC. The Council may also hold public consultations to gather feedback on the nominee's qualifications and fitness for the position. After the interviews is the compilation of a shortlist. The JBC compiles a list of candidates who are the most qualified for the vacant position. This shortlist is then submitted to the President. This is followed by the President's decision. The President has the authority to choose from the shortlisted nominees and make the final appointment. In making the decision, the President considers the recommendations of the JBC but is not bound by them. Next is the appointment and confirmation. Once the President makes the appointment, the nominee assumes the position. And finally, the oath taking and assumption of office. The appointed individual takes the oath of office before assuming the responsibilities of the judicial position. What is the significance of the JBC in the justice system of the Philippines? By rigorously evaluating the qualifications, competence, and moral character of nominees, the JBC contributes to the overall credibility and integrity of the Philippine justice system. This in turn, 
fosters public trust in the judiciary. The JBC is instrumental in ensuring that the appointments to key positions in the judiciary are based on merit, competence, and qualifications. This promotes the selection of highly qualified individuals contributing to a more capable and effective judiciary. Transparent and accountable in its procedures, the JBC enhances public trust and confidence in the justice system. The public's awareness of the thorough selection process helps build trust that judicial appointments are made with fairness and impartiality. The JBC plays a crucial role in safeguarding the independence of the judiciary by carefully vetting and selecting candidates for key judicial positions. This process helps maintain a judiciary that is free from undue influence and interference. And there you have it folks, a glimpse into the world of the Judicial and Bar Council, the silent architects of our justice system. If you found this vlog informative, give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow legal enthusiasts. And don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the fascinating realms of law and society. Until next time, stay curious and stay just.